So it's not been a bad few days to be an Arsenal fan. A fantastic, dramatic late comeback in the Europa League on Thursday, followed up with probably our best Premier League performance of the season. This is the Leicester City versus Arsenal match review. Hello, my name is Richard. Welcome back to my channel. Over and over and over again, the Positive Arsenal channel. In this video, I'm going to look back on yesterday's fantastic 3-1 victory here at the King Power Stadium against Leicester City. I'm going to look at the team lineups. I'm going to analyse the performance. I'm going to somehow pick a man of the match. But before I get into all that, I want to make sure that you are subscribing to my channel. If you're new here, you like some positive Arsenal content, please click on the subscribe button down in the corner there. Maybe you've been here before and you like what I do, you haven't got around to doing it yet. Please do subscribe. And also as well, please give the video a like, share the content around. And if you've got any comments at all to make, about the performance yesterday or anything I sort to do with Arsenal, please drop me in the comments box below as I do love to hear from you guys as well. So Mikel Arteta then made six changes to the side that had won 3-2 in Greece on Thursday night. Of course, it was a quick turnaround, a long flight back as well. Um, so obviously there were going to be changes. So in the end, this is how we, we lined up for this game. It was Burnt Leno in goal, of course, as usual. In the back four, there was actually two changes. So it was Cedric came in at right back for Hector Bellerin. David Luiz was partnered by Pablo Mari, who replaced Gabriel. And Kieran Tierney kept his place at left back. Um, in midfield then, um, Granit Xhaka was partnered by El Nenny, who came in for Ceballos. Um, and there were three changes actually in the front four. That was where most of the changes took place. So Nicolas Pepe came in on the right-hand side in place of Bukayo Saka. Willian came in on the left-hand side in place of Martin Odegaard. And Lacazette was through the centre in place of Aubameyang. Smith-Rowe subsequently moved from the left-hand side into the number 10 position. So that was the way Arsenal lined up. I must admit, I wasn't overly enthusiastic when I saw the team. The midfield of El Nini and Xhaka doesn't tend to work. It hasn't done in previous games. Uh, and up front, of course, um, the two wide positions, Pepe and Willian, two very underperforming players as well. So the team lineup didn't exactly fill me with confidence. In terms of Leicester, then, they actually made four changes from their Europa League defeat in the week. We saw them get knocked out of the competition. Um, so they lined up in 4-4-2 formation, actually, um, obviously without James Madison being fit. So it was Kasper Schmeichel in goal, as expected. They're back four. Castagna came in at right back. And the other three were the same as in midweek. So it was Evans, Soyenchu, and Thomas was there, the rest of their back four. They made two changes in midfield. Pereira was back on the right-hand side. Ndidi and Tielemans was in the centre again. And Harvey Barnes was back on the left. And then up front, they had Ian Acho. He came in. Uh, and Jamie Vardy as well, of course, who's got a great goal-scoring record against us. So they were your team lineups for this game. Well, I'm not too sure where that performance came from, if we're totally honest. Um, really out of the blue, how well we played, despite a shaky start, which has been a, a theme really for us this season, hasn't it? Um, you know, we did concede a goal inside the first six minutes, a sloppy goal as well. We gave away possession on the near touchline um, and Tierleyman was just ran unchallenged into the penalty area to fire across Bert Leno. All our defenders were drawn to Jamie Vardy, um, of course, obviously aware of his goal scoring record against us, but it left Tierleyman with too much space and too much time to pick his spot in the far corner gave Leno no chance. We almost went 2-0 down, didn't we, straight after when um, Bert Leno almost um, gifted the ball straight to Jamie Vardy, but luckily the ball ricocheted back into the arms of the goalkeeper and we maybe got away with one there. But from that moment on, we absolutely dominated this game in a way that I certainly wasn't expecting. It was maybe similar in a sense to the performance against Wolves in the first half, only this time we managed to carry it out for the whole 90 minutes. A really, really good performance from Arsenal. Solid at the back. We dominated the midfield. I was really surprised about that. Uh, and we looked very dangerous as well every time we went forward. Um, we, we thought we had a penalty actually soon after we'd gone behind. Nicolas Pepe went down in the area under a challenge, but it was it was a challenge from two Leicester players. Um, it was Ndidi and Tielemans. Although referee Paul Tierney initially did point to the spot, uh, VAR decided to check it 50 times and they realised that actually the very first contact was from Ndidi just on the edge of the penalty area and instead it was changed to a free kick. It was probably the right decision actually. I don't think you could have too many complaints. When you saw the replay, you could see that the, the, the initial foul was just on the edge of the penalty area. But we brushed that aside and we continued to dominate the game. Uh, as things ticked down towards half-time, it looked as though our good form was not going to be rewarded once again not being able to convert our chances or turn our possession 
into goals. But then six minutes before half time, we did get level. And it was a set piece goal, actually, unusually for Arsenal. We don't score many, do we? But it was a free kick from out on the far side. Nicolas Pepe had been causing their fullback Thomas problems all day. Um, it was another foul by Thomas on Pepe that led to the free kick. It led to a yellow card for Thomas and actually led to him not coming out for the second half either. Anyway, it was Willian who took the free kick, whipped into the penalty, around about the penalty spot. Good movement from David Luiz and he twisted his neck and managed to direct his header into the far corner of the net to make it 1-1. His first Premier League goal of the season, actually, and his first goal for us since back in October when he scored in the Europa League against Rapid Vienna. But a really good goal it was. Um, to bring us level. I think we'd all have been reasonably happy with 1-1 going into half-time, so we were delighted when we had the opportunity to go in front in stoppage time at the end of the first half, when this time we did get a penalty. It was a shot from Nicolas Pepe again. It was a handball from Ndidi. He did have his arm raised inside the penalty area. The referee didn't actually initially give the penalty, surprisingly enough, and it was only VAR that told him to check the screen. He only needed one look at it to see it was quite clearly a penalty. And Alexander Lacazette steps up to send Casper Schmeichel the wrong way, put the ball into the bottom left-hand corner of the net, and we went in at half-time with a lead. The game really changed in early in the second half. Leicester picked up a, another injury they've had quite a lot lately. It was Harvey Barnes went down with what looked like a really bad knee injury, uh, and he had to be stretched off the pitch. Uh, and then within a few minutes, we actually got the third goal, really good counter-attacking goal as well. Granit Xhaka played a big part in it, picking up the ball inside the middle of the pitch, ran forward, found Nicolas Pepe. Pepe played it into Odegaard, who by now had replaced the injured Smith Rowe. He played a lovely ball through to the far side to William, and William turned the ball across the six-yard box for Pepe to tap home. Really good team goal, a really good counter-attack, and of course that made it 3-1 and basically killed the game off. Um, we, we were in total control after that. We could have actually scored a couple more goals as well to have added to Leicester's misery, but in the end it didn't matter. We managed the game really well in the last 25 minutes, half an hour. A good use of the substitutes, I felt, up until five minutes to go when, for some reason, Mikel Arteta decided to bring Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang on. Seemed a strange substitution. We didn't need to score a goal. Uh, we were quite comfortable in the game. May have been a better opportunity to get maybe Martinelli on, on the pitch for five minutes or didn't even need to make the substitution at all, did we, if we're honest. But anyway, Aubameyang did come on for Lacazette and he almost scored a goal, actually cutting in from the left-hand side and curling a shot towards the far corner, which just missed the target. But overall, it was a really, really comfortable Arsenal performance. So we dominated pretty much the whole game. And what I was pleased about was after I'd complained about us not coming back from going a goal down very often this season, we've now done it twice in three days. And the early stages look a little bit similar to the Aston Villa game a few weeks ago. We conceded a soft early goal, dominated possession, but couldn't get the goal. But this time we turned our possession and our dominance into goals and a really good performance. We are playing some good football away from home at times. We just need to transfer that over to our home games now for the rest of the season as well and we'll have a good chance of maybe sneaking into that top six. So the man in the match then is going to be quite a difficult choice today, isn't it? Because there was several good performances yesterday from Arsenal, several good individual performances. Leno didn't have a lot to do, did he? Let's be honest, he couldn't do anything about the goal. He almost gave away a second goal straight after, but overall he was solid in what he had to do, um, but he wasn't really tested too much. Um, I thought the back four were pretty good overall. I thought Cedric was excellent at right back got forward well, um, fantastic energy he showed and defended well uh, also as well. Uh, he had a really solid game. Thought the two centre-halves were good. David Luiz in particular, outstanding he was. Great goal as well at a really important time. So he needs massive credit for that as well. And Pablo Mari as well, despite a little bit of a shaky start with a goal, uh, overall I thought he had, a, he had a solid game. And actually that partnership could possibly be our best partnership actually. Um, and Kieran Tierney at left back, I mean, he's, he's Kieran Tierney, isn't he? Fantastic performance from him again. I thought the two in midfield did well, actually. Granit Xhaka, I thought, was absolutely fantastic in this game. Dominated the midfield. His passing was good. He was winning his challenges and um, an all-round really good performance from Granit Xhaka. Of course, his part in that third goal as well. Fantastic. El Nenny didn't do too badly, did he? He did his job, um, got stuck in, um, kept the ball moving quickly and simply um, and you have to say he, he did a good job there. The front four were really good in this game weren't they? Smith Rowe perhaps was a bit unfortunate to get his injury course just after the equaliser and had to go off. Um, he hadn't really had his best game but he always showed nice touches and, and he was doing okay and of course Lacazette up front worked really hard didn't he? Put a great shift in. It wasn't quite his, his day necessarily in open play, but he did take his penalty well, um, and of course he scored his 11th goal of the season. Um, but of course the, the two out, the two outstanding players were probably the two you wouldn't have thought so would you before the game. The, the two wide players, Pepe on the right and Willian on the left. Both of those two players probably had their best 
games of the season, actually. And the fact that they both came in the same game was crucial for us to to win this game in the manner that we did. It's very difficult to choose between the two, isn't it? If we're going to pick one single out from Adam I mean, Pepe got his goal um, and his all-round play was brilliant. I mean, he gave the fullback Thomas nightmares in that first half, didn't he? Fantastic, direct. He had a really good game. And of course, Willian, two assists, a great delivery for the first goal and um, a great uh, pullback for the second goal as well. But overall, his performance was easily his best in an Arsenal shirt. So it's difficult, isn't it, just to narrow it down to one from those two players. But I guess we've got to pick one, haven't we? And if I had to maybe sway into one, I'm going to give it to, to Willian simply because he's had a difficult season. He had a decent um, performance in midweek against Benfica when he came on. And this was, I say, his best performance for Arsenal. So for me, the man in the match in this game is going to go to Willian. And I never, ever thought I'd be saying that. So a really, really big win this was, wasn't it, in the end for Arsenal. It keeps the top six within reach. I think if we'd lost this game, then I think that would be it. I think we could have forgotten all about Europe from the league next season and then we'd have had to throw everything into the Europa League. So this does keep our league campaign still alive and it does mean that I say the top six is still within reach. It's difficult, of course. You know, teams ahead of us have got games in hand as well and we're still six points off of that top six. But if we can keep producing performances like this over the rest of the season, I did get a feeling yesterday that maybe that Europa League victory against Benfica in the week has lifted a little bit of pressure and we certainly seem to play with a lot, a lot more freedom in this game. Let's hope that's a sign of what's coming for the rest of the season because if it is I think we've got a chance of having a good finish but we've got a chance of picking up a lot more victories in the league um, and maybe we can go a lot further in the Europa League as well. So there is a lot to play for still. This performance really did give us all reason to be really optimistic going into the final couple of months of the season now into the spring when things get decided and everything gets sorted out. So let's hope that we can, can push on from here and we can really put ourselves back into contention of a really strong finish and maybe turn in a whole season around because it's been a difficult season hasn't it let's not make any excuses about that we know it has been it's all about where you finish isn't it not where you start and if we finish strongly we can get in that top six and do well in the Europa League then I think it'll be a really good season then uh, and we can look forward with optimism for the future that's my review there of yesterday's really exciting victory here at Leicester City. I'll say probably our best Premier League performance of the season. It's important that we get this consistency going again and produce performances like this regularly between now and the end of the season. Um, coming up on the channel this week, obviously there's no midweek game this week for a change. So I'm going to be doing some different stuff as well. I'm going to get a live show on uh, looking at the, the whole situation with refereeing and VAR. Of course, there was some VAR in this game as well, wasn't there yesterday? But there's been a lot more controversy this season with it all. So get a few fans from different clubs on to give their perspective on it all and what needs to change going forward to make the whole thing work a lot better. Of course, later in the week, I'm going to be looking ahead towards the Burnley game on Saturday. I'll be doing a, a preview video of that as well. And then, of course, on Friday, we'll be doing the usual live show, the warm-up show. Uh, I'll be getting a Burnley fan on as well and all the usual stuff we'll be doing there. So loads coming up on the channel. So if you haven't done so already, please get the subscribe button down in the corner there. Please give this video a like, share the content around, drop any comments in the box about what you thought of the performance yesterday. Who was your man in a match? Good to have a few choices for a change, isn't it? So um, please drop that in the box as well. Stay tuned to the channel. Loads coming up. Of course, in the meantime, as uh, we uh, can reflect on a really good performance from Arsenal yesterday. Come on, you gunners!